What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first YouTube episode of the In My Feels podcast. On this podcast, we talk about things regarding moods, feelings, relationships, mental health, teenage life, purpose, all of it and more. Anything that you guys ask me, I do my best to give my my input and my answer on the topic. Hopefully that anything I say or do, you find in some way, shape or form helpful to you and that you can apply to your life and possibly share with someone else. That's always the goal of the podcast is specifically to give value to you. I'm going to be doing more of these on here because a lot of you guys have been requesting, hey, how do we do this? Or why, why aren't you putting them on YouTube? Even though you guys want YouTube content. So I figured let's kill two birds with one stone. So you guys want podcasts. You guys want YouTube. So let's, you know, let's combine the two together. And we're going to have some kind of a, of this, you know, uh, it's going to look better than this, but I'm at my grandma's house right now. And this is currently where I live half time. So this is how some of them will look and other ones will look different than this. But yeah, that's, that's kind of how like I'm going to do all, all of this. And um, I hope you guys have like <laughs> today's topic. Today's topic is specifically for people who are single. If you are single and you're looking to get into a relationship or you're just simply in this weird phase where you miss your ex, we're going to cover all three of those and how I see relationships now and how to actually attract the best kind of relationship for you in the future. Before we get into the rest of it, I really want to just talk about a little bit about my past relationship. I did say that I found love and I do think I did. However, I don't think the kind of love that I found was healthy, right? I think that I, the love that I found is a love that I that I saw within my, within my own family growing up. Because relationships for people, they're actually nothing more than how you see it, right? So in the first zero to seven years of your life, your brain is in this stage called theta, the theta brain wave, right? It's a certain brain wave in which you're kind of like absorbing everything around you, you're understanding things, and that's how you're able to, I guess, process and grow as a person. However, if you grow up in a toxic environment and you see toxic relationships, toxic school life, toxic everything or anything of that matter, that's going to completely go part of your subconscious and that will affect other areas of your life down the road, right? For example, relationships for me. Uh, I tend to be the person who fixes people, right? That's like kind of what I look for in a relationship, not purposefully. I'm like, oh, I'm looking, I'm scavenging for the people who are broken. No, it's more so just a subconscious feeling to, that I'm attracted to them, right? And most and most often times it ends up getting me hurt in the process because I always want to feel wanted in the best way that I've ever known how to feel wanted is by helping someone else. And that's not a healthy thing. So I ended up falling for this girl and at first it was great, it was really good. And then things just started to change as her life got more serious and got more tough. We kind of ended up growing apart. I'm not gonna disclose any details about her or anything. I'm gonna have full respect for her and I wish her the best. That's a good mindset to have. Anyways, if you do talk crap about your ex, you can't be doing that because that, that's just bad, that's just wrong. It's not cool because they love you. They loved you at one point. I loved her at one point. I'm sure at some, to an extent I still do, but I put, I put the love for myself first. I put a stronger value on how I wanna see my future and that it's not with her, nor did she see it with me, but based on her actions, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't hold anything against her. I'm not even sad about it because I think about relationships a lot like uh, Tyler Perry, Medea, her character, his character, that character in that movie I saw said, there's a reason why the rear view mirror is smaller than the windshield. In a car, you're looking at the rear view mirror. It's a small little thing, but that windshield is huge. In that rear view mirror is your past, it's your ex. It's that 20% of your life that you've already lived. People would rather stay in that than rather than move forward in life because that's comfortable, right? And likely everything that you've experienced within that 20% of your life has purely been based on whatever you learned and gathered within those first zero to seven years of your life. That sounds crazy, it sounds ridiculous, but in all honesty, that's that's the truth. And it's that's a hard thing, it's a hard pill for people to swallow because you're just in this stage of, you didn't know and you're getting yourself hurt and some people are so comfortable with getting hurt and so comfortable with the way that someone treated them because it was comfortable. It doesn't mean it was good for them and it doesn't mean they believe it's good for them. They're addicted to the comfort. 
for people in an abusive relationship. If you think about an abusive relationship, you think about someone beating up on them mentally, emotionally, um, or physically, right? But it doesn't matter because the reason why that person's even with that person is because in the first zero to seven years, they experience some kind of trauma or something that allows them to even think that's okay. And there's nothing wrong with that and that, that requires some kind of healing, right? That's why we have to grow up and we have to move on in life. And that's where, that's the stage that I'm at. Recently, just a couple of moments ago, I almost had this panic because I found a couple hidden photos on my phone of my ex and, you know, being my body and everything likes to do thought loops and chemical reactions like to just draw me all the way back being me i was like no 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 that's not happening because all that would be is pulling me back to the 20 percent that made me feel the way that i did made me not like the relationship that i had and allowed me to stay in this comfort that's never going to allow me to grow or experience a real kind of relationship with somebody that i'm actually looking for I know I just talked a lot and I'm sorry if I talked fast. This is the most comfortable I've been on camera. I've always tried to make these videos, but I've always deleted them because I never liked how they came out. But you guys really want these and this is how this is how I make my podcast. I'm talking, but I'm trying to talk to the camera while at the same time communicating. So, and I do no cuts. I'm just gonna just piece it all together as best as I can. And they will get better over time, I promise you that. But it's all about the words that are just coming out of my mouth. You hear the words coming out of my mouth and you are good. You are good. I'll keep them shorter though. Like I'll keep them like 20, 30 minutes tops because I know, I know I'm a good looking person. I know I'm funny. I will be bored of me after about 15, 20 minutes. So I, I understand why I need to speed up, why I need to not do all this certain stuff. So there's that, there's that aspect of it. That's my past relationships with a little bit of that. And one thing I really want people to do is the reason why you still keep holding on and missing your ex because I believe you're not realizing your worth. You're looking at that 20%, right? You're looking back at the 20% of your life because there was comfort, right? We just talked about that. I left her. She ghosted me. I left her. For a long time, I was refusing it because I wanted closure, an egotistical thing. I wanted closure and I didn't get it. So I just decided to leave because at some point you have to put yourself first, right? At some point you have, you can't continue to tolerate someone's behavior if it's not making you feel good. You know what I mean? Relationships are supposed to be there for one another and if the other person doesn't want you there for them, then oh well, right? There's nothing you can do about that. There's nothing you can say. I'm not gonna beg for someone to be in my life if they don't wanna be there. Point blank done. Nothing, no, no questions, no nothing. That's why I'm, I'm like the way that I am now and why I'm so positive is because I let go. And now letting go, I've continuously pushed positivity into my soul, into my subconscious, through affirmations, daily meditation. And I mean, just consistently doing those so often neurotically, because I'm a neurotic person, that it's, it's becoming subconscious. I'm able to cancel all my breakdowns or anything with the mere set of affirmational words that I use. I'll make a video on those. We can't make this video too long because I know you're gonna get bored of me at some point. So that's something I really want people to think about. Like the reason why you're not growing and you're, you're holding on is because you still value and tolerate the, their behavior. You still have your entire self-worth within another human being and a past relationship that is over. Take the time that you need to find the acceptance. I'm the kind of person that likes to get over stuff very fast. I'm, I'm just like that. I like to push to the point and bring myself through hours and hours of pain just to get through the healing process faster. That's just me though. I'm I'm crazy like that. Like for the first two weeks, I listened to all of the music that reminds me of her. I did everything that reminded me of her just so I can neurotically push myself to be able to take down these barriers. Don't do that if you were not mentally capable of doing that. And mentally capable, I'm not saying you can't, it's a matter of, do you believe you can? It has nothing to do with me. I believe you can do anything. I believe anyone can do anything that you put your mind to. Sorry, but, but, but that, that's just how I handled it. And it's, that's, that's just, it's a way that I do things. I don't suggest it for people because after a while it did start to really deteriorate on my soul and I had to like take a break, but that it helped me get through the healing process really fast. And that's why I'm here now because I'm like, I refuse to sit here and dwell on someone who absolutely didn't give enough of a crap about me and was too hurt to
to love me and that's okay i'm just and this is where i'm going to lead into the next part and the most important part of this podcast that i really want to get through your guys's head really really want to get through your head if you're single be freaking excited bro be excited because you get one of two things you can either look in your past into 20 percent or be so excited about the 80 percent that you can create in front of you the next beautiful relationship the more that you work on yourself the more that you begin to love yourself take care of yourself and build your self-worth mentally emotionally innerly that same vibration will boost itself out through your heart and mind out to the universe and you will attract someone who feels almost exact similar way about themselves and there you have right there is a beautiful relationship don't pursue when you're single don't there's no need to pursue the universe has you you have to just trust the universe and i know you're for all those religious out there trust god it's 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 really all the same thing all of it any religion or any of that you have to just put trust in a higher being or whatever right you got to just put trust out there that good things are coming to you And to make sure that the good things are coming to you, you remind yourself that you're worthy of it. What do I mean by that? When I post those relationship quotes, it's not to get you to be sad. It's not to get you to miss having those things. It's to get you excited for them. I post them because I'm genuinely excited about reaching the next stage of my life. I am genuinely excited about receiving a real, truly amazing, loving relationship that's good for me. One that I don't have to fix people for. Someone who actually is kind, is gentle, is affectionate consistently. Someone who doesn't have red flags. Someone who isn't mentally destroyed. Someone I can't even fix because there's nothing to fix. There's no, except for me to support them just like they would support me. You gotta be excited for this. This took me a while to really start to believe this. Whenever I'd say these things before, I'd have a nice heartache that would shoot right up like a bullet through the middle of my heart. I felt that all the time. And it would really, really drain me. And I sometimes couldn't handle it properly. And I just, sometimes it would bring me to my knees. It would bring me to my knees. But yet I continue to say the affirmations daily, multiple, multiple times a day, because think about an affirmation, right? When you're writing something, like standards that you had to do when you were a little kid, you remember them standards after that. You, I kid you not, you will remember those standards at least for the next two days because you wrote them 50 to 100 times, right? It's the same thing with your subconscious. The only way that something gets through is by you consistently telling yourself it with conviction, with belief, with positive energy that you may not even have, but you're mustering out. That's why. I have this mindset that I do. That's why I continue to be excited about my next relationship. Because on a daily basis, if not 10 times or more, I say this to myself. I am worthy of receiving a loving relationship. I am worthy of receiving a loving relationship. I am love. I attract love. Knowing that, saying that to yourself, is truly the most powerful thing that you can do. I wanna teach you more about that. I'll make a video on it. In fact, I'm gonna make specific affirmational videos for people in specific situations in which all you have to do is just watch the video, put it in your ears, sit back and recite them as I say them. And that truly is how I got started in the affirmational world. And it's truly how I'm so positive all the time. I'm excited for my next relationship and I want you to be as well. There's one last pointer I can give you before this podcast ends. I know it's short, but I think this message just needs to be short and quick. I don't want to beat around the bush. You are beautiful. You're an amazing human being. And the moment that you believe that, and the moment that you believe that you deserve more than you what you were receiving, is the moment that you would take 10 steps closer to receiving that exactly. Remember that? Suck it in. <sighs> Breathe it in. Who cares? Do whatever you want to do. But make sure that that's you. Make sure that you believe that for yourself. And every day I will remind you that you are worthy of receiving a loving relationship. And at this current moment, you may not be ready for one.
that's okay. Instead of focusing and trying to get with someone else to numb the pain inside you, change it. And put all that energy that you would into seeking out a void within yourself. Fill that void within. Because that's the only way it will ever be filled. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope this podcast slash video form was helpful. Please drop a comment letting me know if this was helpful. Say, I just drop a comment, drop a like or something. It helps give me encouragement so I know to continue to make these more because I do still fight procrastination like a normal person. So I want to just let you guys know that I'm always here for you and that we're going to make these podcasts better. I'm going to do my best to make as much YouTube content as possible. Still keep the podcast because I will strip this podcast, strip the audio of this and put it on the podcast. I love you guys. I hope all is well. Stay alive, stay happy, and look outside if you need some reasons to stay alive. <clears throat> That's how I'm in the podcast, everyone, with that burp. There you go. This is the In My Feels podcast video, podcast day one for the people in the podcast. Episode six or seven, I don't know. It's one of them. It's good for people. If you are single, listen to this. If you know someone who's single and they're still looking over their ex, please send this to them please not i'm not begging you because i want more clout i don't get paid from this i do this out of the kindness of my heart to help you and i'm always going to do that you guys i love you with all my freaking heart let's go